Welcome back everybody to my favorite video of the year, the 2021 EdTech Guru Breakdown. On this episode, we're gonna break down the year in review and give you a quick recap of everything that we have coming up for this 2022 year. So hold on, turn it up, and let's get ready to do this. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lena Marie Sali, the EdTech Guru. I wanna thank you so much for spending time with me on this journey, for all the support that you give me, and for following along. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and let's get ready to do this. 2022 was quite an adventure for me in my personal life. We gave up and sold everything that we owned, and we decided to live as digital nomads, living all across the country. We left our home in Austin, packed up our things into a suitcase, and left on our journey. We went to Tulum, New Orleans, Atlanta, Charlotte, and explored everywhere in between before landing ourselves back in Houston. In between that, I had thought that I would put out more videos than I put out the previous year in 2020. 2020 was the year that I first took the leap to put out videos and content, and I thought 2021 would be the year that I would double those amount of videos. But with the busy personal life, I just didn't get to do as much as I was hoping. And my professional life started to pick up and got a little bit busier than I expected. And if I'm being really frank and honest with you, I started to have a little bit of imposter syndrome as well. Was I doing the right thing? Was I sharing the correct information and content? And so I had to step back and rethink what I was up to. With that being said, I found what I was looking for and realized that I can provide value to many people. I connected with people all across the world and the country this past year. I even helped three teachers get out of the classroom by mentoring them just on my own time. And to me, that was one of the most rewarding things that I'd done this year, in addition to the content that I put out. Those teachers I hope to have and feature on later episodes of my channel, but it was really great to see them go through those ups and downs and have somebody that they could count on who could mentor them through that. And it made me remember why I loved teaching so much and just brought me down to remember that I am still teaching. No matter what my official job title is, I felt like I finally found my home by producing content and I took all of my content and I also turned it into a podcast. So you can always listen to all of my videos in an audio format as well. I wanna preference all of this that I didn't learn how to do videography. I didn't learn how to edit. I didn't know how to do podcasting things. These are all things that I researched and figured out on my own. Nobody taught me, nobody sat down. I found videos, I found YouTube clips, and I just tried rep after rep. Even now, before I turn the camera on, I get this jittery bugs and get nervous, even though there's no one in the room but me. So I want to assure you that if you're nervous about putting out content, you have everything that you need right here don't have to have the best video camera, you don't have to have the best audio equipment, just put out content and you can provide value. And start connecting with other people and network. It's an important concept, an important attribute for our adult lives. And as things turn more digital and virtual, it's an important skill set that you'll walk away with. It's scary at first, trust me, I've been there. And sometimes I still get those little jittery bugs as well, but the risk is always worth the reward. All right, so now let's break down what we did this year. This year, I focused on a few different segments of the educational landscape. I provided videos for ed tech companies who are looking for ideation and what types of skills and strategies they should be using to be able to grow their business to reach teachers. And you can see all of those video clips right here. In addition to that, I started doing a few trend videos, trying to keep my videos shorter so that they were more digestible for my viewers and for you. I did some trend videos where I broke down what trends we were gonna see in 2021, and I'll break down those trends and in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. I also did a spotlight on a few different schools. So Laredo ISD, they actually have their codeathon coming up in January, and they turned their digital digital learning week into a virtual learning day where all parents from everywhere could come. And it was translated into both English and to Spanish. And that was really cool. So I put out a video about that and then surviving Snowvid. In addition to all of the personal things that we had, we had the worst snowstorm in Texas history. I'm from Colorado. 
let me tell you, this storm was like a bad dream that you never want to relive again. It was five days of absolute, just bone chilling coldness. Being in Texas and being from Colorado, I thought, oh, I could survive this. Well, the things I forgot is I now lived in a warm climate, didn't have the tools I needed to thrive or to succeed. And what I saw breaking down outside of me, outside of being cold and learning how to take those things I taught in my classroom, like how to do a solar oven and how to make a stove out of candles. I used all of those strategies to be able to even just warm us up water after being freezing for five days with no hot food or any of those types of things. But what I really saw outside of me was a breakdown, a governmental breakdown. The whole state of Texas, for the most part, except for a few places, were really, really affected by what I like to call snowbid, a combination of COVID, snowstorm, just anything that you could really expect to go wrong during this time. There was no way to communication. Cell phone towers are down. People don't have batteries, except for to get in their cars. Then people were forgetting about their cars, and it was just quite the disaster. The issue was the level of communication, kind of like a school breaking down. You just saw the different pieces falling down. And then you saw people quickly coming together like the pandemic to put the pieces together to try to fix something really, really quickly so that no other people were affected. It took them days and days and days to put the, our state back on the map, literally back on the grid. So if you didn't have a chance to check that out, I broke down exactly all the everything and how the snowstorm really reminded me of education and what we can actually do to prevent these sorts of disasters from happening in our school systems and just as a nation. I also broke down Clubhouse. We saw a surge of people joining Clubhouse and becoming Clubhouse leaders and a way for teachers to connect authentically. When the world was still quite shut down and we weren't still able to do anything, we started to see some ed tech disruptors really starting to emerge from that scene. I recommend checking out that video. If you haven't had the chance to check out Clubhouse, I would check it out. There's also Twitter spaces. There's also all these other audio channels to, to do. But what's so nice about it is that you're able to have authentic conversations with people you wouldn't normally connect with. Just another way, unintimidating, because you're not having to put yourself on video. So check out my Clubhouse episode if you haven't, just to see who's being disruptors there. You'll also see that those people are also disrupting places like LinkedIn and doing a lot of ed tech and educational thought leadership. So I definitely recommend, if you haven't, checking that episode out as well. Then I broke down the AASA. This is an annual report that's put out by a group of superintendents that basically meet, and they go over some strategies for their vision for public schools. So I talk about what they went through and what they decided and the plans that they decided to be in place. And I also shared my thoughts that I didn't think this was an aggressive enough approach and didn't provide enough leadership in order to have school systems really thrive for this coming year. I still think that. I think if you were to watch this video, you would also agree with me as well. So I definitely recommend checking that out. If you haven't ever checked out the AASA report, I highly recommend it as it has a lot of things that will just kind of give you a really good window into what other school leadership is thinking and how they're approaching this new wave of learning and new style of students that are coming through for us. My most popular series to date is anything that I do to help teachers beat the classroom. The reason why I do this, and I've made posts on LinkedIn about this as well, and shared this multiple times throughout videos is because when I decided to leave the classroom, teachers in the classroom told me not to do it. And other people around me, there just wasn't a pathway. I had to connect and I mean really connect. And this was in a time three years ago when people were not connecting like they were. And it was hard to kind of reach people. LinkedIn wasn't as powerful as it is now. However, it, it was. I started connecting with people three years ago. People out of the kindness of their heart started helping me and helped guiding me through that process. And I'm so thankful for that. And so I wanted to provide that opportunity for you. It is a five part series, breaking down anything from what are the jobs that are out there? How do you know which job is right for you? Once you've determined your job and what you're gonna be most interested in, how do you then apply, network, and build those skills? As teachers, we have hundreds of skills. And what you'll learn is they don't necessarily have a one-to-one -one match with what it's like in the basically more corporate space. Even if you're in a startup, it's a little bit different. Your skills will lend itself because those skills don't go out of date. You just have to learn new ones. Just like just our students learn new skills every year, you're learning a new skill to be able to apply it. It's not a one-to-one -one correlation and it's just a different 
beast, I guess you would say. Then in part four, I discussed the interview process and what the interview process can look like, what to expect out of the interview process. And then the last part in the series was when you are offered the job, how do you negotiate and how do you make sure that you have the confidence enough to negotiate and what types of questions can you ask? So I break down all of that for you. And those are my most viewed videos to date. Then I also, in between those two, released a few different videos about professional development, how professional development has been disrupted as a result of the pandemic and how the pandemic has really changed professional learning and will continue to change professional learning. Thankful that it's done that, but I would definitely recommend checking out that video. I just break down what professional development looked like before and how professional development has really transcended throughout the pandemic, endemic, however you want to call it, and how that has affected learning and teaching teachers learning style and how I think it's actually created a better craft teacher, kind of like a craft cocktail. Teachers are actually able to pick and choose what they need to be able to support them. However, what hasn't really necessarily caught up with that, and you'll see that in that video, is the school systems still haven't caught up with the recipe of cocktails. EdTech companies are starting to evolve and offer different professional development. However, I'll break this down in another video, they still aren't there yet, and there's still a lot of things that need to get there. EdTech companies are fearful to take big risks because education systems are scared to take big risks. And because of that, you have this very slow, 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 like 100-year movements of things that are not happening fast enough to support our learners and our teachers and just the entire school system as itself, aka not being disrupted fast enough. I also discussed in a video how different industries are really stepping up to the plate. We've seen governments actually putting out summer camps and really stepping up their types of offerings. Um, in Ohio, there is a governmental office that actually does internships with a real world application, social media aspect, videographers. These governmental offices are actually stepping up and providing these opportunities for students because they know that there's actually a gap between the student's skill sets and then also what they need for the industry itself. We're seeing places like Samsung and different types of more trade-based work. And a trade-based work, if we've seen anything from the housing crisis and the housing boom, is such an underrated. We've shied so much away from that, even though technology is fully immersed in all of those fields, that there is a shortage everywhere that we look. Because okay. people are taking these higher paying jobs, leaving the trades behind. And the trades are also a very high paying jobs, but there's not enough people to support those systems. Because if they leave to go do something else or even retire out of those systems, we don't have enough workflows to go through. Although we see robotic type things coming into play, you still need somebody to come fix your ceiling fan, um, somebody to do build the homes. There are so many strategies and so many skill sets that are just often underlooked that we're seeing industry starting to step in and saying, hey, we'll help you if you help us. And so I would invite you as teachers, if you're thinking about that, if you see something in your school that you wish the students had, see if there is an industry around you that be willing to support and trade. The students get some credit by going there and you are ultimately helping to provide them with workers later on. So I would say check that out and just see what those different companies are doing. And then I also broke down the stuff that nobody tells you about job hunting. I recommend checking that episode out just because I've been seeing a surgence of this on LinkedIn and people sharing about their job postings and just kind of in a sense, kind of ranting about the job process and the ghosting and all the things that happened. Listen, that's life. Life is full of ghosts. <laughs> And shadows in the closet, right? Like there's always something that's there, but it's how you handle it and how you're going to transform yourself that's going to transcend yourself above everybody else. So just some tips and tricks there that I definitely recommend checking out. I really tried to break down what people don't tell you about the job hunting process and things that you need to know in that aspect. I also broke down the top five podcasts and books that you need in your life right now. So I take special books that are going to transform teaching and different podcasts and then also gave honorable mention to that. I definitely recommend checking out those podcasts. Some of my favorite podcasts are there. I also explored a few new ones that I haven't shared about before. If you have any comments on those or any suggestions for that, please feel free to pass those along. I love learning about the different podcasts that are out there and what people love and what people are wanting to consume for content. This year has been a year of acquisitions from Kahoot, acquiring Clever, from Baiju, acquiring White Hat Jr. and Tinker. Everything that they touch is turning to money. They are able to do so many amazing things in addition that they're providing innovation centers to basically innovate 
for new ed tech products. They've gotten so big that they're able to do that and they have such a wealth of resources under their roof that they're really just doing amazing things. Every time I look at a new news story, every time they have acquired someone new and they're big names that help support the small names. Then I also broke down how abandoned shopping malls, as you know, are just, there's so many abandoned stores, shops, and things like that all around the country. Everywhere you look, they're abandoned. Then you look at the school systems and their schools are so old, they need so much work that an abandoned shopping mall could actually be the way to district innovation and innovation hubs between and cross between industry and the districts themselves and bringing different trades and just doing all kinds of things actually that could be the window into innovation. I also discussed the real reason why teachers are leaving the classroom and really discussing that. It's really a lack of support. It's not because teachers don't love their craft. It's because we are not supporting them. Check that out. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear your feedback on that. And then the last video of the year that I published was a guide to how to implement PBL in your classroom. I have always been and will always be an extreme advocate for problem-based learning. At the end, there is a project, but problem-based learning, it's true inquiry. The reason why I love it so much is not that it has the science and technology and engineering and math in it, but it gives students the ability and teachers to fail and learn from failure and also to take risks. I think that's the greatest opportunity, but also what it does is it's like ordering pizza. All of your favorite things are on it <laughs> and you're able to cover more things. You can add a ton of things to pizza and it still tastes delicious. But if you have parts of the pizza outside of it, it might not be as delicious. And so I think about PBL as that same sort of way, like building the best gourmet sandwich that you can. You can take the pieces of the sandwich. They're not as good when they're put together. And PBL is a quick way to cover all of the concepts that you're working on in these projects that are meaningful and intentional and are building skill sets that provide lifelong learners and skills that the students wouldn't normally get. So it's going to be one of the most gratifying ways that you begin teaching. In addition to it does push student growth well beyond test prep. Test prep only lends itself so far. It's like going to take your driver's test. You can fill out all the bubbles and, and do well. But when you get on the road, you're a disaster if you've never practiced. So it's that applicational piece that gives students the ability to think critically. Now, I've broken down all of my videos. I put out 27 videos last year. I put out 27 videos this year. I was hoping to double that amount of content. So like I said, I'm a bit disappointed in what I was able to do. But I think this year I was able to build some really enriching networks, help some teachers. And so I kind of had to divide and conquer in that way. This year, I will be putting out a podcast. So stay on the lookout for that. Not just my videos coming into an audio experience. I'll actually be putting out a podcast. So stay tuned for the details of that. Put out 27 videos last year. I was really hoping to double my content this year, but with things in my personal life, things in my professional life, I just didn't get the opportunity to produce as much content as I wanted. But what I did get to do this year is, be, is to become my first guest on a podcast with Christopher Nessie, who I am quite the fangirl of. I love the content that he produces. He has the whole educational network of podcasts that he actually is a co-founder of and just a really great, kind educational thought leader that I highly recommend following the content that he produces, just really designed to really lift educators. That's really our point, right? And, and just really dissects subjects digestible for you to hear. So I would recommend checking him out. And I'm so honored to have been featured on his podcast. I also, like I mentioned, got to build those rich connections, help mentor quite a few teachers, and just built more connections than I thought possible. I really try to put myself out there, even through the times where I felt burnout, like I'm sure that all of you had felt, and I just really try to increase my reach, if that makes sense, by reaching out. Just like you, I want to continue to network, meet people, be featured. I really am have some big ambitious goals for this year. And so I'm hoping that I'm able to share at the end of the year that I was able to achieve some pretty ambitious things. I hope that you've been with me. And if you have been with me along on this journey, I just want to thank you so much. It means so much to me that you take even a minute of your time to listen to my episodes, hear me speak and break down all things that are tough and hard when we disrupt education together. Please do connect with me. I love connecting with you, hearing from you. If you have any important concepts that you would love for me to cover and go over, maybe you would like to feature your company or business on my podcast. You'd like to be featured here. 
please go ahead and reach out to me. I love hearing from you. Like I said, subscribe, share with others, and as always, disrupt education. Thank you so much. You've made it this far. I appreciate all of your support. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, throw the comments below in the comment section. I'm always looking for new ideas and hot trends, or if you're looking to sponsor our podcast and video episodes, reach out to us on any of our social media channels, and you can even find us anywhere you find your podcasts. Once again, my name is Lena Marie Saleh, the EdTech Guru, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.